I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a few examples on derivatives. What I notice is that now students have learned how to find derivatives using the different rules. However, they find it very difficult to simplify. So when you have to simplify, you need to factor, correct? That's the key. So in these examples, the idea is to apply the rules which you have already learned. But key is how to simplify, right? So, so concentrate on the process of simplifying the derivatives of the given function. That's the whole idea. So I've taken four examples here where we are going to apply basically uh, product rule, chain rule, and quotient rules, right? So the very first one here is, let me write in terms of y. So I say y equals to x cubed times 3x minus 5 whole square. Uh, I'm writing purposely in terms of y because I want to use Lebanese uh, notation that helps you to exactly show what is going on. So I'll differentiate both sides with respect to x. So basically here we have to apply the product rule, right? So we'll differentiate the whole thing with respect to x. Uh, that's what we mean, correct? Since we have product of two functions here, both are functions of x, we'll apply the product rule. So, so we get here d dx of x cubed times 3x minus 5 whole square plus x cubed times d dx of the second function, which is 3x minus 5 whole square, correct? So in the very first video, I'm going through all the steps, which I'll not go through in the next video. So try to understand the whole process. This is the idea. Then we'll do it faster. Now, derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times the other function, which is 3x minus 5 whole square plus x cubed times derivative is, so we'll apply chain rule here. We have 3x minus 5 times 3. Perfect. Now when you get this kind of an expression, you can actually factor at this stage. You'll find that since we applied the power rule, we have a factor common and here also. So we have 3 common, x square common. So 3x square is common and this factor is also common with a power of 1, correct? Once you factor it out, you're left with 3x minus 5 from the first term and you get 2 times, I mean, yeah, and you get, because you've already taken 3x squared common, you are left with just, uh, just the number 2 here, right? So we'll write this as plus 2, correct? So that's it. So we have 3x 3x square already taken common. This factor is also common. You're left with just 2. Now we can combine, right? So we have 3x square times 3x minus 5. And here we have 3x minus minus 3. I mean, okay. Now 3 is again common. So we'll factor this 3 also out. So that makes this, let me write 3 times 3, 9. x square, 3x minus 5 times, we took 3 common, x minus 1, correct? Now 3 times 3 is 9, x square, 3x minus 5 times, x minus 1. So go through these steps once again, see how in simple steps, we are factoring the common factors and simplifying. So i like you to follow these steps and do the rest of the questions. And once you're done, then look into my solutions. I hope that helps. Now let us differentiate and simplify the given function. So we have f of x equals to 2x minus 5 whole cube times 3x squared plus 4 to the power of 5. So we'll apply product rule to differentiate. We'll write in terms of y. y equals to 2x minus 5 whole cube times 3x square plus 4 to the power of 5. Differentiating with respect to x, we get 
First derivative of the first function, let me write here applying the product rule, p of d dx of the first function, which is 2x minus 5 whole cube times the second function, which is 3x square plus 4 to the power of 5 plus first function minus 5 whole cube times derivative of the second function, which is 3x square plus 4 to the power of 5. Now derivative of this function applying power combination chain rule we get 3 times 2x minus 5 whole square inside term derivative is 2 then we'll copy the next which is 3x square plus 4 to the power of 5. Here we have 2x minus 5 whole cube derivative is 5 times the whole expression to the power of 4 times derivative of inside term which is 6x. Now let us see what is common. As far as numbers are concerned 3 times 2 6 is common right so we'll take that. Then there is no x here. We have these two factors. First factor is 2x minus 5 power of 2 power of 3 so we can take power of 2 common. The second factor 3x squared plus 4 to the power of 5 and 4, 4 is lower, we'll take that, correct? Now what remains here is 3x squared plus 4. And from this side, we have 2x minus 5 times 5 because 6x is already taken care of. So we have plus 5 times 2x minus 5, correct? 3x squared to the power of 4 and 6x, x also is there, right? So let me write down x here. Okay, so that remains. You have to be kind of careful at this stage just to ensure that you have taken care of everything, right? So we have 3 times 2, 6, uh, and these two factors, perfect, 5, 6, x, everything taken care of. So now uh, let us copy the first term, which is 6 times 2x minus 5 whole square. 3x squared plus 4 to the power of 4 and within brackets let me open this then we'll combine so we have 3x squared plus 4 plus 5x times 2 is 10x squared and 5x times minus 5 is 5 times 5 is 25x okay so we have 6 times 2x minus 5 whole square, 3x square plus 4 to the power of 4, and uh, 3 plus 10 is 13x square, then we have minus 25x, and then we have number 4. Correct? Now at times this could also be factored, 4 times you can find sum and product. Uh, and factor this also or at times uh, we can try minus b b square minus 4 is the formula to to factor this right so it is just possible uh, 4 times this is uh, 4 times 3 12 to 1 uh, 72 so we have the term 4 times 3 13 is 72 we are looking for two numbers whose product and sum could be minus 25 so 72 is 2 times 36, 36 is 4 times 9, so if 18 plus 4, so it probably doesn't work, but you could use a uh, quadratic formula. I suggest that at this stage, if it is easy to factor, factor it, otherwise just move on. So we get 6 times 2x minus 5 whole square times 3x square plus 4 to the power of 4. And uh, we'll write this as 13x squared minus 25x plus, plus 4. So I'm not sure if I've done a mistake here because normally this could have been factored also, right? So we'll kind of end it here and we'll take up the next example. In this particular question, we are going to apply the power rule and the quotient rule to find the derivative. So we are given y equals to x squared minus 3 over x squared plus 3 and everything to the power of 4. So the derivative dy dx is equal to 
four times the function itself x square plus 3 in the denominator to the power of 3 times the derivative of inside function right so that's the chain rule which is x square minus 3 over x square plus 3 correct so that gives us 4 times x square minus 3 over x square plus 3 and derivative applying the quotient rule will be denominator square which is x square plus 3 whole square derivative of numerator which is 2x times the denominator which is x square plus 3 take away derivative of denominator which is again 2x times the numerator which is x square minus 3 great now we can expand and simplify the numerator so we have x uh, four times uh, let's rewrite this as such x square minus 3 over x square plus 3 now here 2x cube and 2x cube will cancel and these terms will will add up so 2 times 3 is 6 6x plus 6x becomes 12x so we have 12x in the numerator divided by all this which is x square plus 3 whole square right? so as you can see uh, these two terms will cancel taking 2x common and minus minus becomes positive so so it is 6 times 2 12 perfect so that's what we get and now we could write our answer which is 4 times 12 is 48 so we have 48 x and this term which is x square minus 3 divided by x square plus 3 to the power of 2 plus 1 which is 3 so it becomes q so the derivative of this function is equals to 48x times x square minus 3 divided by x square plus 3 whole q perfect now let's move on and take up the last example now in this example the function is x square cube root of 6x square minus 7 so again we are going to apply the product rule so let me again rewrite this as y equals to x square cube root of 6x square minus 7 so dy dx is derived to the first term so we basically have a basically if you do d dx of the whole function which is let's say x square cube root of 6x square minus 7 then applying the product rule we get d dx of x square times the second function which is cube root of 6x square minus 7 plus derivative of the second function so x square times d dx of this function which I may write as 6x squared minus 7 to the power of 1 over 3, right? Since applying power rule is easier using that kind of a function, right? So now we could write this as 2x times cube root of 6x squared minus 7 plus x squared times. So this gives me 1 over 3. And all this to the power of 1 over 3 minus 1. So we get 6x squared minus 7 to the power of 1 over 3 minus 1 gives me minus 2 over 3. Correct. Now I want to show you how to factor this kind of a relation. Now <laughs> we have 2x, x is common. So let me do this. We could factor out 1 over 3 and x over 3 from here. So we could take x over 3, x over 3, leaving 1x in this position. 6x squared minus 7. This is to the power of 1 over 3. This is to the power of minus 2 over 3. So I could take that common, right? So I could write this as 6x squared minus 7 to the power of minus 2 over 3. What remains is since I divide by 3, I have to multiply this by 3, so I get 6. And uh, as far as this term is concerned, 
we'll actually get 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3. So we basically get here 6x squared minus 7. Do you see that? 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3 will give us 3 over 3, which is 1. Plus, we haven't taken x from here, so we'll write down x in this place. So this is what is a simplified version. Now we can open this bracket and uh, write down the final answer also. So let's write down this in the denominator. So we are left with x times all this in the numerator. So I'm going to open this bracket. So 6 times 6 is 36 x squared minus 7x plus x. That is the numerator. Denominator is 3 times. Now that is square of cube root of 6x squared minus 7. Do you see that? Perfect. So which I will just take one more step because we can do minus 7x plus 6x minus 6x. So let's continue. So we have the derivative here, which let me write dy dx as equal to x times 36x squared minus 7 and 1 is 6, so minus 6x. So I combine 7x with plus x, and I get here 3 times cube root of 6x squared minus 7 whole square. Perfect. Now we can again take 3 common and x common. Do you see that? So we can take x times 3x common, leaving behind x minus 2 over 3 times cube root of 6x squared minus 7 whole square. Now you can further simplify cancelling these 3's. So you are left with x squared times x minus 2 over cube root of 6x squared minus 7 whole square. So that becomes your final answer. So as you can see, if the radicals are involved, we may have to simplify it further to get our result. So I hope that helps. And this is very important since at times you may be required to find the second derivative. So in the next unit, we'll be doing higher order derivatives. So for that, you have to simplify first and then move forward. I hope that helps. So we basically use product and uh, quotient rules to find derivatives, also chain rule. Uh, and major exercise was how to simplify, that is how to take factors and then simplify. I hope that helps. Feel free to share your comments and views and if you like and subscribe, that'd be great. Thank you and all the best.